Okay, so Isaiah Evans is one of the best basketball players in high school in the United States. And th the question that everyone has is, does he have elite potential that can, de that can develop, develop even better at the D1 NCAA level? And can he make the NBA? How elite is he? Well, let's get down and let's check out some of the things that he does that you need to be able to do if you want to make the NBA. And also one thing that he needs to fix. If you want custom basketball training programs, make sure to go check out the link that is down in the description below. And if you want me to analyze your jump shot, the link is down there as well. Okay, so there's not many players who will point out defensive stops in their highlight tapes. Being able to be a defensive stopper or somebody who plays good defense is something that really needs to be paid attention more to. I remember when I played down in the States in high school, there were not a lot of players looking at defense. They were just looking to be the best offensive players possible. So for a highlight tape to start with a defensive steal is something that is quite different. Also, I like the fact that he was able to get down quick and then he was able to gather that ball in two hands and then he was able to push the ball back down on offense. Right away, looking up, looking to see his teammates so that he wouldn't be the only one going down court getting collapsed on by multiple defenders. Anytime that you are in the open court, you need to have your head up. You need to be looking for your teammates. That's exactly what he does right here. He's able to find his teammate who is then able to get the ball back to him for the dunk. So many players will think that, oh, I need to go all the way if I'm looking to score. If I, if I, I want that basket. I got that steal. I need that basket. Well, guess what? One of the easiest ways to score is to not even have the ball at all. Because then you can get yourself open and, of course, in this case, get a dunk. Isaiah Evans is also a very good shooter. He's a really good shooter. His shooting percentage is very good. His arc is very good as well. And he can pull up from three as well as the mid-range area as we see right here. I also want to point out the fact that right here, he gets that ball because he is moving off ball. So many younger players don't tend to move off ball. He was doing a quick high cut across the free throw line. And because of that, he didn't have any defenders who were guarding him at least close enough to be able to contest that shot. And I wouldn't call this a contest. In my opinion, he knows exactly how long it will take for him to get that shot off. So with him going up into this shot right here, there's enough distance between these two players and a hand up is not just a good enough contest for an elite player who is ranked in the United States. You need to get your body closer. You need to get your hand up higher. And that will be a contest. Without the body being closer, this is not a contest because Isaiah Evans should, at this point in his career, know exactly how long his shot will take to get off. And that is definitely not contested. Now, what I like here is the fact that he gets the ball into the high post. Obviously, he's a big man on his team. Running the high post is very, very, very important in the game today because it opens up a lot of options. Now, what I would have liked to see Evans do here is to pivot right here so that he could set essentially a screen on 22. If this man curled back in when he sets that screen, if this guy didn't stop, he should have continued to cut through. If he was to continue to cut through, this could have been a pass because he brushed this guy long enough to be able to create that distance between these two players. If he was to pivot out and set a solid screen with the ball up high, this could have been an easier cut for this guy. That's just some food for thought, however. However, now he's in attack mode. He takes that quick glide dribble out. He's trying to size up his man, trying to see what options he has. Should he go right? Should he go left? This man is playing him straight up, which means that he needs to attack that right side in this case because obviously he has more of a gap, more of a lane on that side. And then he takes one dribble and he's able to get straight to that rim. Now, watch before you say this is a travel, watch his hand placement. He is not gathering that ball until that right foot, which means that he's got one more step at the AAU slash NFHS rules level, and then he was able to get to that rim. He was able to get to that rim by taking big steps. So many players will, and I should say so many players, but also so many fans will think that this is his gather. This is his pickup. This is his pivot. 
because he he hasn't dribbled right now. He hasn't dribbled, hasn't dribbled, hasn't dribbled, taken two big steps while not dribbling. However, he doesn't gather until there. That is where the traveling rule gets confused. Everyone will think that because he dribbled his last dribble on his right foot, that his left foot should be his pivot. But it's not because he doesn't pick the ball up until there. Your hand has to be, more than half of your hand has to be under half of the ball. Which means that right here, his hand's on the side of the ball, which means only half of his hand is under half of the ball. You need to have at least more than half of your hand under the ball for it to be a carry or a gather. So that is why he was able to get away with a move like this, but also he was able to get away with it because of look how long his steps really were. His steps were massive. By taking big steps, you can get past players much easier. He also runs the floor extremely well, gathers on his left right here, goes up on his right, and then he's able to slam it down. Right here, he's dribbling towards his left side. He does a quick snatch back because his man was running alongside of him. And when he does this, this quick hezzy, that would have been actually probably a good time to pull up. He may have been able to pull up but he didn't obviously didn't feel like this would be the optimal situation because this guy is guarding him pretty tight. So by taking a quick dribble towards his left side and then pulling up right away, he felt like he had the timing to be able to get that shot off. One thing I really like here in the low post is the fact that he gets that ball, he chins it, he keeps it above his chest, and then he's able to go straight back up. I like that as well. A lot of younger players will bring the ball down here, in which case pretty much all three of these guys would have been probably trying to steal the ball and hacking his arms off. Again, another defensive highlight, and I like this one because he obviously dropped down. He was guarding 15 earlier. He dropped down because 20, his back, was to Isaiah Evans, which means that you can get these guys quite easily with blocks because they're not paying attention to you. They've taken too many dribbles in the low post. Their back is to you, which means that if they go up for a shot, you better be ready to block their shot. And I like the idea, I like the fact that Isaiah Evans' teammate just stood there with his hands up to make the shot tough. Because that is Isaiah Evans' block. That is not the block of that defender. That defender, if he tried to block that shot, would have got called for the foul. So good defense by both of these guys. And right here, he's able to make contact with his body first into the defender. And then he was able to reach out and get that layup. You always want to try and make the, the, the defense work. You always want to try and make contact with the defense first. And that is what allowed him to make that basket there. Two dribbles attack here off of two feet. Again, anytime you're trying to attack a defender or a help side defender, you want to try and make contact with him first. One of the easiest ways is to go off of two feet, and that's what he does here to be able to score. The biggest mistake that I see him do, and that is at this point in the video, and I've mentioned this in another video as well, his hand is too far towards that side of the ball. The reason why I say this is when you see him release, he has a side flick. In a lot of cases, he has a little bit of a side flick. Here he actually shoots straight. But if we go to this clip right here and many other clips, he has this side flick to him. The reason why he has that side flick is right here. His hand is too far to this side of the ball. His hand needs to be right here. If his hand was more over towards this side, he would have no side flick. He would have the ball release off of the pointer and middle finger instead of the ring finger and middle finger, which would allow for a straighter rotation, but also a straighter shot, and he wouldn't need to have a side flick. I hope that this video helps you become a better basketball player. If it does, hit that like button, subscribe. Make sure to go check out my custom basketball training plans down in the description below. But also, make sure to go check out myself breaking down your shooting form. That is down in the description too. I'll see you guys again in my next video.